Uh, yeah, uh, pregame show. Sorry. Hypervigilance on the baby. <laughs> Always makes you perk up. Uh, so yeah, pregame show. Um, a good week of reading. Uh, let's see. Started going through this issue, the October 1965 issue of Amazing Science Fiction. Or Amazing Stories, rather. First in science fiction. And uh, the one that I read in the back of this is called Dusty Answer. And I haven't looked this up yet, but I think that I think Dusty Answer might be uh, part of some sort of colloquialism or proverb or, or something that uh, makes that phrase uh, makes that phrase sort of uh, a turn worthy phrase. In other words, there's a there's a kind of a, a, a narrative pivot that happens as a result of that phrase. And it feels like that phrase should be more familiar to me based on how the story treats it than it actually is. And it makes me wonder if it was uh, some kind of like a slang or something back in 65. But that's to build that, you know, is TBD. Uh, I deliberately waited on reading the Ray Bradbury short story in this one because I wanted to, uh, to view this issue as not just Bradbury plus some other stuff, but Bradbury among other things. So I think I'm going to read one more non-Bradbury story in this before... Uh, jumping into Chrysalis, which is uh, which is a favorite. As a matter of fact, um, the premise of that reminds me of um, I think Hartman was his name from uh, Death Stranding, uh, because the it opens with a guy who's like dead most of the time. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, and uh, continued reading uh, Donald Ritchie's Hundred Years of Japanese Film, and I gotta say, if you go to Humble Bundle right now, there is a Japanese ebook. Uh, bundle up right now which contains like five books by Richie which is on sort of Japanese pop culture and aesthetics and not just like modern aesthetics but it's kind of like aesthetics over the long haul and Richie is a fantastic cultural historian I highly recommend it it's like $18 and uh, yeah highly recommend getting that uh, the other th language that I've bounced back onto oh, okay cool uh, the other language that I've bounced back onto is Old English which I uh Studied independently, I studied in undergrad, uh, the literature of it in translation, then independently learned it after undergrad, and then studied it formally in grad school. But it's been a little while since I've done any kind of translation with it, so I decided to get back to it. And the first place to go, because language starts as phonetic, is to become refamiliarized with the, uh, with the pronunciation key, which is a lot of fun to go through. So it's like ah, 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 eh. A, I, E, A, O, U, U, E, E, and it's like you just go through and just like make those noises over and over again until the vowels feel natural. And when you come across them in the words, you can just kind of hit them. Fulan, Fusian, Yerwan. Yeah, you can just kind of hit these kind of uh, much more quickly. And so when you're reading the poetry aloud, it feels better. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, as for the last part of the pregame show, so the last one went on a little longer than I think I'm going to keep them going at, but uh, but I still do enjoy these sort of like scene breakdowns from some of these movies I've been watching because they're very well constructed. So this will be uh, shorter than I think the 10 minutes that the last one went on to. This one's a little more focused. So uh, let's see. Did I? Oh no, I didn't set up the new one. Uh, well, shoot. I guess. Hmm. I guess I'll save that for next time. So uh, yeah, anyway, it's a it's a it's a particular scene from uh, from the movie Massacre Gun that has just got fantastic staging. It's beautifully rendered, and I look forward to showing that to you when I have it prepped <laughs> for next time. So, uh, but yeah, since that's not ready, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game.